So now we've seen that we're going to assume that the unemployment rate is always on the Bevouch curve. So the unemployment rate is going to become a function of um, the market tightness. Um, and so once we have this assumption, actually, it's very easy to compute the aggregate supply in the model. Uh, and exactly like in the basic model and in the two market model, the aggregate supply will be one of the key equation that we'll use to solve our model. Um, so how do we get the aggregate supply curve from our, essentially from our beverage curve? So the key thing here is that, uh, you know, basically what will happen is that the aggregate supply curve, it's going to be the beverage curve that links, so that links tightness to unemployment combined with uh, combined with the production function and the production function links um, and you know employment to output so uh, that's just going to be this is to link employment to output and the beverage curve it's to link essentially tightness the market tightness to unemployment and therefore employment. Uh, so the aggregate supply curve will be a combination of these two uh, of these two relationships. So uh, what does the beverage curve say? Uh, beverage curve. What does it say? So um, so beverage curve. Um, it says that the unemployment rate u. The unemployment view is equal to lambda, the job separation rate, divided by lambda plus f of theta, uh, the job finding rate. <clears throat> and so the beverage curve, you remember, it's obtained by looking at the critical point of the differential equation for the unemployment rate. And therefore, on the beverage curve, we are at the critical point of the differential equation. So labor, uh, you know, the, the Market flows are balanced. So there are as many job destruction as job creation. So that's the beverage curve. It says that uh, you know it, it gives the it gives the unemployment rate when uh, flows. So the flows we have is the e to use that is employment to unemployment, and the u to e that is uh, unemployment to unemployment. Uh, when flows are balanced. And, and uh, so that's what the beverage curve give. And here we're going to uh, we're going to assume that that's always the case. But as we argued uh, previously, um, this is quite a, a good assumption because in essentially in a quarter, most of the distance of the unemployment rate from, from the unemployment rate, the beverage curve is going to vanish, like 90% of it, wherever the unemployment rate is. Um, and so we can assume that the unemployment rate is indeed always very close to the beverage curve. And I must say, um, that's an assumption that's actually fairly common in the matching literature. So Bob Hall has a bunch of paper where he makes that assumption. Um, Pissarides has a bunch of paper where he makes that assumption. Um, so. It's something that um, people often do to simplify the analysis of the model. So we have that beverage curve. Then the production function here is very simple. We assume that um, any worker, oh, sorry, so something I should say also. So if the beverage curve says that the unemployment rate u is lambda over lambda plus f of theta, this is telling us <coughs> that employment in the model, which we denoted by L, it's, which is just one minus, so employment is the employment rate times the size of the labor force, right? So this is uh, the employment rate, that's one minus u, h is a labor force, right? Uh, and so, Uh, so here, what I what I know is that the beverage curve tells me is that it tells me that the employment rate is a direct function of tightness. It's f of theta divided by lambda plus f of theta times h. 
Okay. Uh, so this is what I get from by reshuffling the beverage curve and instead of expressing it as a link between tightness and unemployment, right now I can express it as a link between tightness and employment. Um, all the, you know, all these things are exactly isomorphic. So that's what it gives me. And then the production function here is very simple in this model. We said that every worker has a productivity A. So every worker per unit time can produce A services. So we know that output, <coughs> output is going to be A times L, where L, uh, where A is a um, labor productivity. So it's just a linear production function. Okay, and so if I combine my production function with my beverage curve, I get my aggregate supply curve. <clears throat> and the aggregate supply curve is going to give us, uh, gives output uh, when unemployment uh, and, you know, vacancies are on the beverage curve. Okay, so the IS curve, it takes um, the labor force um, decision as given, and it's going to give us output when unemployment and vacancies are on the beverage curve. So the, when flows on, the, on our market are balanced. Okay, so here, the aggregate supply curve, we can say it's Y, I can denote it by YS of uh, theta, S for supply, and it's just going to be uh, F of theta divided by lambda plus F of theta times A H. So the aggregate supply curve, it's a function that, link, that uh, links tightness to output and will denote it by YS of theta. And uh, we can see very easily what are the properties of the aggregate supply curve uh, Ys of theta. Uh, so what we what we know is that uh, we can get all these properties very easily. So we can see that y uh, uh, Ys of zero. So the aggregate supply curve. Uh, The aggregate supply curve when tightness is zero, that's zero. That's because F of zero is zero. So the job finding rate when there is no tightness is just going to be zero. Ys of infinity, that's just A H uh, because the job uh, finding rate when tightness is infinite that goes to infinity. Remember here we have a cobb glass matching function. So the job finding rate goes to infinity when tightness is infinite. You remember that f of theta is just mu theta one minus theta. So of course, when theta is infinite, f theta is infinite. And we can also see that ys of theta is increasing in theta. That's obvious, that's because uh, f of theta is increasing in theta and the function that at x associate x divided by lambda plus x is increasing in x. So the aggregate supply curve, it's uh, a composition of two functions that are increasing, one x over lambda plus x, the other one f of theta. Uh, and so as a result, it's going to be an increasing function. And so we can just, you know, just for completeness, we can plot we can plot uh, the aggregate supply curve. So I'm going to put tightness on the vertical axis. I'm going to put output on the horizontal axis. I put zero, I put AH, uh, which is AH is basically the capacity uh, 
that's the capacity of the economy because that's the maximum amount of services you could produce if all the workers in the labor force were employed. Uh, <clears throat> and so the aggregate supply curve is going to look something like this. And uh, so when we're on aggregate supply curve, we can read output here uh, for a given tightness. And here, uh, the gap between output and the capacity is just idle capacity, which is um, proportional to unemployment, of course. So this is our aggregate supply curve and its, and its properties. <clears throat> 